Yes, Anthony Joshua is back on Sky Sports. His huge heavyweight clash with Francis Ngannou will be broadcast live on Sky Sports box office. That's Friday, March 8th. To talk about this and more, I'm joined by heavyweight contender Jamie TKV and former world champion Enzo Macronelli. Good afternoon to both of you. Good afternoon, Good afternoon to you too. That's, I, I never get tired of seeing that, um, that uppercut against Klitschko, Jamie. I mean, it's called knockout chaos. Can't be denied that both of these guys are huge punches. 100%, both big punches. But I believe that night will be Joshua's night. I believe that Joshua will get the knockout and he's going to shock people. Now, we're, we're really happy to have you here today, but even more relieved because yesterday was a busy day. Tell us where you were and with who. Um, I was sparring, AJ. I just joined last minute, not necessarily last minute, but the last few weeks of the camp. I am sparring AJ leading up for the Ghanu fight. And... Um, yeah, we're working. So I was there yesterday sparring. Well, thank you for, for giving up uh, your free time, relaxing time to come in with us. Enzo, I don't think everybody will know, but, you know, your boxing history speaks for itself. But you are a huge UFC fan as well. You know, certainly more qualified than the majority of people. You watch it since the early days. What changes have you seen from the Francis Ngannou who stepped into the cage and what he was renowned for in the UFC compared to that... Uh, 10 rounds that we saw against Tyson Fury, what we were able to judge him on? Well, MMA at the moment is massive at the moment. It's absolutely, it's evolved from when I started watching it 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, and these, these MMA fighters now, they actually train with proper professional boxing coaches. They train in proper professional gyms. They're around professional boxers of all different levels. Um, so when he's in the cage, he come out, he's very aggressive, he was very explosive, he's looking for that one-punch knockout, which is what we all thought he was going to do against Fury. But under Mike Tyson, who came up with such a good game plan, he sat back, he showed patience, he made Fury come in and attack, which is not what he likes to do. So I thought it was a very effective performance. I know I wouldn't say Fury was at his best, but that's his fault. And I thought Ngannou was brilliant that night. I look at Ngannou there, in that head-to-head, -head, and Jamie, I just think... He is enormous. And I know we're in the land He's of the heavyweight player. giants at the moment. Of course. But what a man mountain. I mean, just, you're, you're impersonating him at the moment in those sparring yeah, sessions. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. You know, I'm not doing you down at all, but yeah, he, of course, he just yeah, looks nah, enormous, even compared to you. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. Do you think that he may well have lost an element of the surprise factor? Um, I mean, people are probably expecting him to do a good job. Probably, a lot of people are probably expecting him to, to, to beat. AJ, but I feel like he's underestimating um, he's, he's underestimating AJ himself. So I don't, I don't think that's the right move to make because AJ is on point and AJ, I think, will be dangerous on the night. So he needs to come on point too. You know, um, yeah. Enzo, the, the fight against Fury, it'd be one of those moments where I think we all remember what we were doing and where we were when Tyson Fury hit the floor. I didn't think it could happen. I honestly, uh, I, as I sit here now on Sky Sports News, I didn't think it could happen. You're a big boxing fan. I'm a big boxing fan. I've watched boxing for years. I didn't think it happened at all. I thought he was going to come out, be explosive like he normally does. Fury was going to dance ring rounds him, make him a one-sided fight. So you've got to say, Ngannou impressed that night. He boxed well. He boxed on the back foot. Like I said, he boxed with patience. Uh, he counted with shots. He made Fury... He showed a, a boxing IQ I never thought he, could, he had. And he did it. And I think it would have been a much more dangerous fight for AJ if he hadn't seen that. AJ might have himself like us, but I thought it's going to be an easy night's work. But he shows he have got a bit of a boxing IQ. Mm. He shows that he can put down the heavyweight champion of the world. So AJ is going to be switched on that night. Yeah, I mean he shut all of us up, to be I'm, honest. 100%. Because, I, I, and I'm happy to admit that. What about his journey? I mean, incredible story, Francis and Garnu. Just mm. simply incredible. If they do a movie, you probably wouldn't believe it. It's 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 that outrageous. But he's had two fights at heavyweight, or this will be his second. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So to become king of the UFC in the heavyweight division, to then turn over and never had a boxing match before and you take on the greatest heavyweight of the modern era in many people's eyes in Tyson Fury, then to get in with Anthony Joshua, what does that say about Francis Ngannou as a, a fighter and a man? Pretty incredible. A very fearless man, because not many people would do what he's doing. So I, I consider him a very fearless man. Yeah. Let me just ask you in terms of your career, Jamie. We saw you last time out against Konstantin Dobvyshenko. Great to see you back to winning ways. That was off the back of your first uh, professional defeat where I think, you know, pretty hard on yourself, but considering where you thought you were going, it wasn't ideal. A bump yeah. in the road, but 
It hasn't set you back too much. No, it hasn't. And it's a lesson learned. You know, it's a mistake that we made as a team and it's a mistake that we won't make again. You know, but um, he's someone that I do want to get back. You know, it was... A, uh, I do feel like I'm capable of, of beating him. I just, I just didn't give myself a chance of being the best Jamie TKV that I could be on the night. So, yeah, I mean, I got a chance to, to showcase some different type of skills the other night, you know, just to box and, you know, show just a, a different selection, point selection of myself, you know, just a different, just a variety of myself, pretty much. Why we're on the heavyweights, Enzo, um, for a long time, I think we thought that Jamie TKV was one win away from the likes of Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark. March 31st, who do you fancy in that one and why? I, I, when, I, when I pick a winner, when I pick uh, someone who I think is going to win, I always go on what I know. And if you look at the elite level of competition Fraser Clark has boxed compared to Wardley, it's, you know, it's up there compared to Wardley. But then you've got to remember they're amateurs. Wardley have done it in the pro game and he's, he's faced every challenge that's been put forward to him. Uh, you've had a couple of bad rounds, you've overcome them bad rounds, you've adapted. So I've got to go on Fabio Wardley. Uh, saying that, I think it's going to be a good fight because Fraser Clark, I believe, isn't the type of person to look good against the standard he's been fighting. I think he needs a challenge, he needs a bit of fear and I'm, I certainly think this is the challenge, this is the test, this is it's put him in a place where if he loses, it's going to be a long way back. So he's going to come out all guns blazing. To be clear, who do you think wins that fight? What is your prediction? Um, I believe Fabio, just because of I know how things will pan out. Like I, I believe Fraser will probably have the first three, four good rounds and then Fabio will then take over. I feel like Fabio gets stronger as the rounds go on and he, and he, and he maintains that power. So someone who maintains the power in the later rounds is always a dangerous man. So I believe he's a dangerous fighter come the 31st of March. And you can get in with the winner sooner rather than later in your mind? I mean, it makes um, it difficult if it's Fabio. It's, yeah, but it's not... Yeah. You know, I'm not playing promoter here, yeah, but just course, business, yeah. you know. But We'll split the trainers. Yeah, <laughs> no, but you know what? May the best man win. I'm, I'm rooting for Fabio. We're in the same gym. I'm going to help him out for the sparring for that fight anyway. I'm going to help him out as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Fabio. Right, our next guest is joining us remotely and has some big breaking news. He's a man on a mission to shake up the cruiserweight division. My sole focus is professional boxing and I want to become the world champion. Ah, this wonderful division, a mix of 14 stone four talent. If I don't believe that I can beat these guys, then why am I doing it? Well, it's time for the realist, Vidal Riley. Um, we know now that you're going to be fighting on Sky Sports for the foreseeable future. So tell us all about it. Man, it's exciting times. It's exciting times. We know I started my career in the, in the US and when I decided to come back to the UK and really settle and um, decide to, to take my professional career to the next level, it was with Sky Sports. And yeah, I'm delighted to announce that I'm going to remain here for the foreseeable future and hopefully deliver some big fights for Boxer and for Sky Sports. So we already know your next fight. Uh, back end of last week, you, you announced Mikhail Lawal, uh, defence of your title at the O2 on the undercard of this Wardley Clark heavyweight bad blood showdown. Dangerous fight against a dangerous puncher and a quality opponent. Well, this is what we like. This is what we like, Andy. You know, we've had many conversations and I'm all about competition. I'm all about being challenged. I want to be, I want to know that the guy on the other side of the ring can do me damage if I'm not on point, you know, and it forces you to be on point. And it also brings out some superstar performances from me. Um, I've shown that throughout my boxing career, especially in the amateurs. And I've shown as a professional as well that I'm going to continue to progress and get better. The only way to continue that journey is to up the level of opponent. And I think this is a perfect time um, wow, he's got a lot to fight for, um, former British champion, me with aspirations of being British champion. These are the tests that you can, you can look back at and say, right, this is why I'm ready to, to keep going and end up at that final stage, which is the world level. It creates this dynamic for us, though, because I think everybody was looking towards a collision course fight between you and British and Commonwealth champion Isaac Chamberlain. We know that Chev Clark is in the mix as well. Um, 
we know that there are a lot of spinning plates. From our point of view, the headline writers and our narrative will now be uh, the job that Isaac did against Mikhail Well. Can you equal that or better it? Apologies to Mikhail Well, because he'll be watching this saying, well, they think it's a done deal already and he will love to spoil this party. And I, I have to say that publicly, you know, Mikhail, uh, I'm not saying this is a done deal at all, but you can see where we're going with this. Your performance against Mikhail Well will be judged against Isaacs. Naturally, naturally. Um, when, I, you know, I came to the team and said I, I'd like to fight Lawal next, I always thought of that as a just another chapter in the story of hopefully the fight that happens between me and Isaac. That's his like, direct last opponent. So we can see, you know, how Isaac won in the fashion he did. And, of course, that's a motivation for me to top that and, and do it in spectacular, spectacular fashion. And, um, yeah, that's what the motivation is in camp. That's what the motivation is to train. And regardless of who the person is on the other side of the ring, we always want to do it in the best fashion that Vidal Riley can do it. I'm going to bring in former world champion Enzo Macronelli. Enzo, you're on the safe side now. <laughs> Only just about, just about. You're still looking at these guys. But in terms of this domestic cruiserweight division, it's difficult to think of a time where there were so many runners and riders and... We're all watching to see who's going to be the one to really kick on. From your point of view, as you're looking at all of these guys, just how exciting is it? And if we can get them fighting each other, it's even more exciting. It's great to see, you know, when I, when I was boxing, we all wanted to fight each other. We all wanted to get in the best against each other, see who the best man is. And that, that's what we're having now. I think it, it's marinating nice, nicely. You know, I was talking about Vidal and uh, Chamberlain. Uh, I actually believe this is a perfect step up for Vidal to go in with Chamberlain. I think it, it's, I think Lawal suits him a little bit more than Chamberlain. But boxing is about preparation, about see, preparing himself for the next fight. So this is perfect preparation for him. We have Billam Smith, we have Riakpo. I think Corey's going out the way. We have... Um, Chev Clark, we have Jack Massey. So it's all marinating like nicely. It's some great fights to be made. There's some great styles to be uh, up against each other. And I'm excited to see how it all turns out. And I'm excited to see who the top dog is at the end. Now, Vidal, before I let you go, uh, a little birdie tells me that you and Jamie TKV were in the same school. In terms of the hardest kid in class, your, your little brother, uh, Jamie, was in the same class, I think, or same year as Vidal. I mean, yeah. your poor teachers. I'm looking at both of you now, Vidal and Jamie, your poor <laughs> teachers. They didn't have a chance, did they? No, not at all, man, not at all. But no, it was good. Obviously, I know Vidal from when he was young. I remember one time, I ain't seen him for a few years, and I remember seeing him in the ABAs. He greeted me, I didn't, I said, Who's this kid? Then I remember seeing him again. I'm asked, oh, like, where are you from? He's like, Jamie, you don't remember me. As he said that, his face formed into that little kid again. And I remembered who he was. But then, yeah, so we reconnected that same way. I'm just delighted that you never stole his lunch money or maybe it was the other way around. But yeah, I don't listen. want to be stealing his lunch money now. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want, you can have it, both of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. Vidal, thank you so much for joining us on Zoom. Best of luck on the 31st. Jamie and Enzo, thank you very much as well. That's all we have time for this week. Now, remember, what a fight we have in store for us. You can see Anthony Joshua against Francis Ngannou live on Sky Sports box office on March the 8th. So remember, that's Friday, March the 8th. That's all we've got time for this week. Remember to download the Toe to Toe podcast. We'll be back next week with more special boxing guests from the world of boxing.